everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams, this is my hobby YouTube channel, on here I chat about makeup and a sprinkle of fashion, but my main, main, main love are eyeshadow palettes, I like reviewing Essence and Catrice products, and I am a YouTuber who likes to get the use out of their products, so I do a lot of shop my stashes and really sort of focusing on what I have, I'm not a true project penner, but I like going through things as well, so that's sort of where I'm coming from. I really like to test things out before I talk about them, and I'm not someone who focuses on the newest of the new makeup, you could say. And what I've been doing this entire year is that once a month I come on here and I review all of the eyeshadow palettes I have from one particular brand, and I thought, since I ended up having quite a bit of Pat McGrath, that we could feature Pat McGrath this month, and also because she is doing a really good sale. Pat McGrath is of course a very expensive brand and when I first bought them I wasn't too impressed so I would definitely recommend if you want to try the brand to for instance buy it right now when there's a Black Friday sale going on because then I find that it can be worth it depending on what you pick. Uh, I think there's only one item here which is this guy here that I didn't buy in a sale. Everything else was at least 25% off. If I can get a deal on Pat McGrath I'm not buying it because I find it way, way too expensive. As you can see, we've got some quads lying at the bottom. I've got three of the larger motherships and then one of the six pans that came out last year. There is currently a order making its way to me because Pat McGrath opened her Black Friday sale super early last week. And so I will be extending this collection. Uh, however, I wanted to make sure I had a video to go up today, so that's why I'm already filming it. I was hoping the product would be here before I sat down to film this video, but sadly that didn't happen. So that's why I'm coming to you with what I currently have, so let's get started. My first Pat McGrath pur purchase was actually one of the Blitz Astral Quads. And oh, by the way, I have to film this with some artificial lighting because it's a very gray and murky day, I'm afraid. So this is the Blitz Astral Quad, um, as far as I know, a nocturnal Nirvana. And this was a holiday collection a couple years ago. I think you can still get it. And these are four of the special shades that everybody's always going on about. And that's why I wanted to try this. And I've taken everything out of the boxes as well to make it easier to talk about. And this is what the palette looks like. I'm pretty sure that in this lighting the shimmers look even more amazing than they do in regular daylight. I do apologize. But you get like this bluish duochrome, this green is stunning. I really like the purple in here. And something you should know about Pat McGrath is that she puts golds in every single palette, which is another reason why I'm like, eh, is it always worth it? Not necessarily. And the reason why I didn't love this palette at first swatch was because this creased on me really badly. I really had to figure out how to make these work, and especially these special shades just aren't the best if you start using them in the crease. They are definitely more like toppers, lower lash line kind of things, so especially this quad is more of a companion palette rather than a standalone, I feel. Like, you definitely need to bring in some other shades. But it is really pretty, so let me show you. So, that's what these shades look like. And I have no clue what these are called. There are little cards, but I never know what the shade names are like, and especially that green is just really, really pretty. So that's the Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. And once I figured out how it worked, I bought another one of the Blitz Astral Quads. This is the one in Ritualistic Rose, which was released in the same collection. All of the Pat McGrath palettes come in this like black packaging that's all the same, which is why I've kept so many of the boxes, because else you just can't tell these apart. I actually kind of regret getting rid of the packaging that these were in, but these didn't come in the same sort of like manageable packaging. They, they would take a lot of time to get in and out of the box, and I was like, I won't get the use out of that if I don't, if I keep them but now that I have more, I'm like, why did I throw away the packaging? Anyhow, this is what Ritualistic Rose looks like. Oh, that's very bright. Let me see if I can show you. I think that's better. So this is what the palette looks like, and rose colors is what Pat McGrath is by now known for, and I think this is actually the palette that kind of got it started, because this was released before either one of these, like, rosy palettes over here. This has some stunning shades, especially this guy here. Ooh especially this guy at the bottom here and also this guy at the top, so let me show you. So there you have those shades right there. 
And with this, I felt that these felt a little bit drier. And I know that a lot of people are saying like, yeah, but I'm not really sure what everybody's going on around with Pat McGrath, it's so expensive. It's just that with these kind of textures, I'm sure that if you like buy something from an indie brand, you can find something similarly. But a lot of these like special shades from indie brands are also more expensive. Uh, like for instance, if you go in with something like Cleona or something like that with the multi-chromes, then you can pay up to like 25 Canadian dollars for a single shadow. And these quads are around the 55 euro mark, I believe. And I, I bought both of them with 25% off. So, I mean, then you do get to pay a little bit less. Um, so I think that, you know, it's high up there in price, but I think it's it can be worth it. Now, this is the collection that was released for last year Christmas holiday release. Uh, these are the Lux Quads in Interstellar Icon, uh, Floor Fantasia, and what was the last one? Oh, something. I don't know. It's, it will be on the back, but I'm not sure which one I'm opening. This is the one that I don't know the name of. Oh, this is Fleur Fantasia, which has like the pastel -y shades. It is again a little bit rosy, like pinky lavender. Um, and this was one of the ones that I liked, but I didn't love it once I tried it. I think that if you have anything like deeper than my skin tone, this probably won't look really good on you because it's very light and very pastel -y leaning. Um, but the shimmers in here are really nice. However, they aren't the same kind of shimmers that you get in the larger palettes or that you get in the Blitz Astral Quads. That's perhaps good to know. These are a little less dimensional and by now, this is all she seems to do in the quads. Next up is Interstellar Icon. This is actually my favorite of the three. This is the one that I thought in advance I was going to like the least and this was the one I wasn't going to buy. But then the deal that they had last year essentially meant that I got this for free. So I was like, I'll buy the entire set. And this ended up being my favorite, especially because of these two shades right here. So let me show you. So there you have those shades right there. They are really, really pretty. And the gold in here isn't like too gold. It's more of like a peachy pinky shift which I like, and I just really like these grungy tones. Like this is, a, this is a quad you can wear by itself. Like you don't have to bring in other shadows to make it work. And finally, we have the one, oh, Risqué Rose. I knew it had something rose in the name. Uh, and this is another quad where I feel that you get a little bit more matte. So again, this is pretty okay for like a single look in a palette and it works quite well. This purple is amazing. And that's what this palette looks like. And there you have that. And I feel that these three quads together can also make for a nice little family to get some more versatility out of them. Now, before we get to the motherships, I want to show you this. This is the Rose Decadence, and this was a palette not everybody liked all that much when it was first released. And this palette, I actually ended up, oops, there's a little card here. Um, I ended up liking this actually quite a bit because I really like the mattes in here. You only get two of them, uh, and you do get some really interesting shimmers here as well, but especially this warm peachy shade is one of the best crease shades ever. And I always think that I'm not the best for like warm tones, like they just don't look that great on me. But this was a warm tone palette that I felt was very flattering on. So let me swatch these for you. So that's the top row right there. And you can just see with that matte, how amazing that swatch is right there. And these are the bottom three shade in it. And especially this shade is just dark enough for it to still pull pinky, but a little bit of plum and it just works really well. And then this shimmer is really interesting because it's bronze, but it has this like pinky vibe to it. And then you just get this gold, which as I already mentioned, Pat McGrath insists on putting golds in every palette, which I wish she would stop doing because gold eyeshadow is like my least favorite thing. <laughs> Let's talk about the motherships because I think that if you were to buy anything Pet McGrath, I don't think that you should go for the quads. I think you should go for one of the bigger palettes because then you really get a feel for her entire range of shadows that she does. Pat McGrath is another brand that features a lot of mattes. 
um, in any of her palettes. There's only like two or three in every single one. So it's definitely more of an editorial look that you're going to get with every single one of them. However, I have definitely focused my motherships that I've selected on the more natural, more wearable ones. Quite possibly the least wearable one is the one that comes in this box, which is the, the Divine Rose 2. Uh, what's this called again? Just the Divine Rose 2. Yeah, um, I, I thought it had another name, but it doesn't. This is the deeper version of the Divine Rose, and that's why I ended up buying the Divine Rose, because I thought they could make a nice little family. Um, but this is what the palette looks like. You get two mattes, everything else has a level of shimmer. And what I like about this one especially is this pink shade, because that is really going to amp it up and make it more interesting. I know a lot of people talk about this multi-chrome, but I already mentioned if you want good multi-chromes, I would definitely go for indie brands, not necessarily Pat McGrath. But I do really like how this color story comes together. Let me see if I can make this catch the light a little bit. I hope you can see. So let me swatch. And that is what the Divine Rose 2 swatch is like. And I definitely think that under this lighting, these like shimmer shades look even more amazing. Um, I have to say though that um, when it comes to the way this comes together, also on my fair skin, it works really well. I can easily tone down these shades. And what I love about Pat McGrath palettes is that even though you get a lot of shimmers, something like this can still be used in the crease quite easily. My next purchase was actually this guy. This is the first palette she ever came out with. She released three palettes in one go. And this is the Mothership One Subliminal. Um, and this is the cool toned one. So that's why you knew I had to try this. And this is my favorite Pat McGrath palette. I know this is the one that gets talked about the least because A, it's quite light, so it's great for fair skin and it's cool toned, which is not everybody's favorite, but you will see as I swatch these out on my fair skin, but especially these two shimmers on the end are amazing. This taupe is great. This is great for blending. You get enough shades to deepen things up. I really like this. This is definitely my makeup aesthetic, you could say. So there you have Subliminal One, Mothership One. As you can see, it works really well on my skin tone. These two mattes are perfect. The black isn't too deep that it's too stark. This deeper taupe shimmer is lovely. Topped with that lavender, it's amazing. This blue is a fun pop of color on the lower lash line, and you get enough transformer shades to really amp up the rest of the palette. I think that this is the kind of palette that just works for me because it works with my skin tone so, so well and every single shade just works. So if you want my recommendation, I would look into this. And finally, my last purchase over the summertime when she did a 25% off sale was the Divine Rose 1. This one was still on my wish list because it's just the lighter sister of the Divine Rose 2. It is perhaps a little bit deeper once I got it home, but again, if you have very fair skin and you're looking for a good rosy tone palette, I think this may be nice. Again, something taupey, but everything has a bit more of a plummy, mauvey vibe, even this brown, and I really like that. It's just that here, these two shimmers aren't necessarily my favorite, and I feel that especially this deeper one doesn't really go with the vibe of the rest of the palette, so that was a bit of a shame, but I do really like these two again on the end. And that is what the Divine Rose one looks like when we swatch everything out. As you can see, it is cooler toned than the Rose Decadence for sure, especially because of these two like browns and that lavendery rose shade. It definitely has some warmth, but not that much, which is why I still really like it. 
However, the subliminal is still my favorite because I feel it just goes with my undertone much better. I like every shade in this palette. And in here, I feel like, for instance, these two, I just wouldn't wear, wear all that much. But it's got enough going for it that I like it. And yeah, I can't wait to play around with this a little bit more. I just did a couple of looks to try it out for this video. And I do really like it. It's just not as perfect as I'd hoped it would be. So that's it, there you have it. Those were all of my Pat McGrath palettes. I really hoped you enjoyed watching this video. If you were planning on buying something in our sale, I hope that my thoughts were helpful enough for you to make up your mind. So please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I'll be sure uh, back shortly with a new video for sure. So if you would like to stay tuned till then, have a great day everybody. Bye bye.